This is a smaller, tight-knit group of individuals that really represent the country. It doesn't matter what age you are, if you're willing to win, you're willing to put your best effort. It's not how hard you get hit. I ended up fracturing my thumb. They suspected that he had Crohn's. It's how hard you get hit and get knocked down and get up again. We don't take days off. That's right, strength, no weakness. Sky's kind of the limit. Get ready, because today we are taking a look at some of our future prodigies and pros. This is No Days Off. My name is Ronnie Zavala. I'm 15 years old and I ride scooters professionally. My name is Joe Zavala. I'm nine years old. I'm a professional scooter rider. Ronnie and Joe have a lot of similarities because one thing they have in common is they both love to win. We wake up at 4 o'clock every morning to get ready to train CrossFit. Some of the exercises we do there is we bench press so we can get have stronger arms and stuff. Again, we do like a push the sled sometimes, we do a row. We're like kids so we want to eat ice cream all the time or have burgers. We got to stay away from that because if we eat like that we can't ride to our fullest potential. Also the training we do, like it's really hard but I mean we do it. When we first started practicing, when we got into the sport, we're hitting eight hours a day, five days a week, just riding all day long, just so that the boys can continue to get better. There's a lot of stuff my dad does for us, just the time he sacrifices. But he's also our coach. When we can't understand a trick or when we can't like push ourselves to do it, he's always right there like as a backbone. He believes in us more than anybody else does. They're competitive. They compete against one another. They both pretty much like the same things. It's kind of weird because they're six years apart, but yet they act like they're twins. I used to ride a skateboard, and then Joe rode scooters, so I hopped on it one day, and I just realized that's a lot more fun than riding this skateboard. I'm looking at Joe when I'm riding, and I'm like, dang, he's getting good, so like, I have to try to push myself to get better just so I can like keep up with him, because if I just slack like a minute, he'll just come and just pass me. Ronnie pushes Joe because Ronnie is the king. Ronnie is a better rider than Joe. And Ronnie pushes Joe because Ronnie's older, so he does bigger tricks. He can get more difficulty on tricks. So that motivates Joe because Joe is such a competitor that he wants to keep up with his brother. I really like competing, so that's what draws me to scootering, is just the competition in it. Joe, on the other hand, motivates Ronnie because Ronnie knows Joe's right behind him. So Joe has got to the point where he's good enough to where if Ronnie doesn't continue to progress, Joe will hawk him down. So Ronnie's always worrying about Joe coming up, so by Joe's riding ability, pushes Ronnie. I wanna try to beat him one day. <laughs> Two years ago, me and Joe were at a competition and we both placed first in each of our categories, which was really cool because no brothers have ever done first to first. It's rare that anyone's ever done this in the sport, but they've done it three times in three different events where they both took first place. Yo, what's up, Nick? What's going on, man? Nothing much. What's up? What's going on, bro? So we need some new wheels, man. Right, I'm thinking for the Root Honey Cores, gold on white, and the Root Honey Cores, red on white. SD12, dude. That's like the biggest like scooter competition ever. You guys have competing around? Right? Yeah, right. competing there. That's like the one that gives me like the most butterflies is that <laughs> comp right there. All right, what are you guys competing in? Are you guys doing M? No, we're both doing pro. Both it's actually pro? his like his oh, first wow. actual pro comp. Okay, okay. Like that's gonna be his like pro debut. You nervous, Joe? Yeah. The scooter community in SoCal is ginormous, you know what I mean? Cali weather, you know, it doesn't hurt. Tons of skate parks around. And I've just seen this scene grow. The tricks these guys are throwing down, the notoriety the sport's getting, you know, it's blown up. When we lost our first park, basically we were there five years and they wanted to raise the rent. Like, just couldn't, couldn't make it happen. So a year later, we're back, you know, we're building a new zone. 
bigger, better, stronger, faster. <laughs> Everyone's stoked about it. Can't wait to get this thing built. We're gonna make it a little bit more of a training facility this time around. So that's why we kind of laid it out a little different so guys can really get in and train, get their skills down. That's what the Z boys are gonna be doing a lot here. Basically what this section is right here, this is more for like the beginner because it has smaller jumps, smaller ramps here. You don't get as fast, you don't get as high. This is where the bigger tricks happen right here. We have the 10 foot roller back in the back wall. We have the 12 foot roller that leaves straight to the step up. That is ginormous. And then we have the massive corner here. And then right where we're standing is there's gonna be a resi. Basically what a resi is, there's a black layer of like plastic on it while there's like mattresses and foam under it so you can throw bigger tricks so you don't like land hard. Ooh, I'm gonna throw like some cash rolls, some double backflips and everything. Whenever the boys start getting real good and they start winning a lot of competitions, uh, they start uh, attracting a lot of fans and the fan base start demanding for us to, uh, to come up with our own merchandise and to brand ourselves. So in the scooter world, there used to be like 14 sets of brothers that were popular worldwide because both brothers were good. We were one of the 14, but we were the youngest by maybe six to eight years. So at this particular time, brothers start calling themselves the Bo Bros, this bros, that bros. We didn't want to be the same, we wanted to be different. So we came up with the last name is Zavala. My sons are young, so we just called ourselves the Z Boys. Two of my favorite parts I have about competing in a scooter competition is the butterflies. Like that feeling you have of like, oh, I'm about to go, like you just have that nervous feeling. The second one is as soon as you drop in, you have that adrenaline like, I can do anything. We don't miss a day. And there's times that we go to a skate park that opens at seven and we close it till 10. I can definitely see the Z boys being top of the game in the scooter world, definitely. After you have a perfect run, you're just like, oh my gosh, that feeling is just, that three weeks of practice you had is just all over, just down to that moment, and you just got it perfect. That's like the best feeling in the world. Coming up next. MVP, these bars, carbon wrapped titanium. The deck has got holes in the middle to make it lighter for us to do his tricks on. And then these MGP wheels, really smooth and fast. So it's not really important that you have a good scooter. It's really all about how you ride the scooter, not about what scooter it is. The youngest professional scooter in the world, Charlie. We've got a real rhythm and a real floor. He's a great rider to look up to. His work ethic is fantastic, second to none. Scootering's got me all over the world on shows in different countries like America, China, Italy, Germany, Belgium and England. It's pushing the sport in the right direction. It's helping the sport progress. I'm Charlie, I'm 11 and I'm a professional scooter rider. I got my first scooter at five or six years old. When I first saw kids riding scooters at skate park, I thought that it looked really dangerous, but also cool at the same time. I saw people doing flips. It looked like it felt good, like just being upside down and stuff. His grandfather bought him for Christmas. It never left his side. It went everywhere. We were obsessed with it, yeah. I was that happy that I just rode it straight away, just got on the skate park and tried my best. But I saw people doing flips on scooters, not people doing flips on skateboards. Scootering's like, you can whip the deck round and you can also double flip. It's just really different because you can do whatever you want with it. A bit nervous when we first went to an indoor skate park. All ramps seemed so big and kids were flying everywhere and obviously as a dad to a six year old. Yeah, it's been nerve wracking, a bit nerve wracking to start with. But now I'm, it's just everyday life. My parents were scared at first. Once they knew that they could trust me with it, then they were fine. Now, what goes through my head is, mate, you could have gone a little bit higher. <laughs> but that's because I'm used to seeing him fly through air. I know his ability and I'm confident in his ability. A couple of years back, my heart would be racing, I'd probably be shaking, nervous, but now nah, I sit back comfortably and believe in him. The hardest trick is backflip triple whip. No, in fact, no, it's not, it's 544. I mean, you're going upside down and doing a 540 degree rotation in mid air. He never really had a coach. I don't think back then it was something he had a coach for. He just watched videos, YouTube, and he chose tricks from that to learn. And he said, that's what I want to do next. That's the next step kind of thing. Well, we come here like Mondays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. 
and just practice. You spent a lot of time in the skate park, some seven days a week sometimes, four hours a day, never stopping. You used to wear gloves and elbow pads and an helmet, everything were wet through with sweat all the time. You never stopped, you were just a little pocket rocket. When I first started, I could not do anything, and I progressed because I tried my best every day at the skate park, and then I got better and better and better. Now I am a professional scooter rider, and I'm doing double flips and stuff, so I progressed a lot in the last five years. It's fun, if you've ever got spare time, you can just come here and like relax and just try new tricks. I either see people do it, or just it comes up in my head, and then I just think, Oh, should I try it? I try it. If it goes well, I keep trying it. And then if it don't go well, I maybe try it later on. Personally, I think it's good to watch Charlie ride. It makes me want to do more tricks like he does. It gets exhausting if you ride non-stop for a couple of hours. It's not really a fitness thing for me. It's more just putting my mind to it because if I'm enjoying it, I don't get as tired as easy. He knows he's got to put the hours in. Kids aren't born extremely talented, hard-working kids are the ones that are going to succeed. He works hard, he works for hours, he puts in effort, he takes a lot of knocks and bangs and gets back up and knows that you can't just try it once and fail. You've got to keep going and I think he really does get that. So he's got a really old head on his shoulders. Coming up next. It's to be taken a bit more seriously. I hope there's a future in it, purely because these kids that attend these events and put so much hard work in, they deserve a future from it. And it should be their skateboarding or their BMXing. It should be kids' uh, way of making a living and enjoying life. Charlie Dyson scooter, it's really good. It's light and it's really nice. This is the new VX9 MGP. These bars, carbon wrapped titanium. The deck has got holes in the middle to make it lighter for us to do his tricks on and then these MGP wheels really smooth and fast. So it's not really important that you have a good scooter, it's really all about how you ride the scooter, not about what scooter it is. I saw his Britain's Got Talent video, it was really good. it has got talent were probably the proudest moment of my life, to be honest, yeah. Standing ovation from four judges, as well as thousands of people from Manchester and people that had travelled to watch the show. And he went out there and he absolutely smashed it. I was really nervous, but after I did it and I got four yeses, it felt really good inside to know that the judges liked it. I hope it starts to be taken a bit more seriously. I hope there's a future in it, purely because these kids that attend these events and put so much hard work in, they deserve a future from it. And it should be their skateboarding or their BMXing. It should be kids' uh, way of making a living and enjoying life, travelling, being part of action sports. That's why I hope for it. I think it's getting a lot bigger. More people are entering and trying, like you see little children, local skate parks having a go at it. I think they get into it more because they see other older people doing it and they see how good they are, so they just think, oh, I'm going to try that and see if I can get that good. Charlie's a great kid who um, I look up to as a great scoot rider and hopefully he does well in his scoot for it. If he never makes anything from it, he's had a fantastic childhood. When I'm in the air, it feels really good, especially upside down because it's like you're flying. It feels Amazing. I just hope that he gets to an age where even if he has to work, he's, he enjoys life. He's met quite a lot of friends, travel the world, see different places, meet different people. I want what everybody wants for their kids. It's a bit of happiness, really. That's, that's the main thing. I'd say I'm really good for my age. Like, I don't know about the best, but one of, one of. There's a lot of kids that I'm friends with that are really good. Coming up next. So we bought him a pedal bike thinking like, all right, this will take a couple months. And then within three days, he learned how to pedal and was pedaling around the neighborhood. That was kind of like the moment that we were like, okay, this is exciting. My goals are doing a backflip and I'm working on doing T-bogs. I said, Jules, do you ever get scared? And he goes, yeah, I'm scared all the time. And I said, what do you do when you're scared? Like, how do you stop being scared? He said, I don't stop being scared until I land. A lot of the stuff that he does, there's some riders that'll never do it. There's some stuff that I'll probably never do.
much older kids, adults are hitting these features that are, in my eyes, huge. My name is Jorian. I'm eight years old and I'm a mountain biker. I started mountain biking when I was four. We didn't have full suspension, so then we got a downhill bike and we found a place called Mountain Creek and then we started going there. Yeah! Oh yeah! My sister actually got Julian a Strider for his birthday. He wasn't able to ride it right away. During the next summer, he picked it up. So we bought him a pedal bike thinking like, all right, this will take a couple months and then within three days, he learned how to pedal and was pedaling around the neighborhood. That was kind of like the moment that we were like, okay, this is exciting. When we lived in Philadelphia, we rode bikes a lot just through the city. So when Julian started biking, it was just kind of something that we could all do together. That's kind of really where it started. Even before Jules was riding, we had the little seat on the front of my bike. Yeah and we'd take him on trail rides, and we had a tiny helmet. I think he was six months old. I'm working on whips. I'm working on no-handers and no-footers. My goals are doing a backflip, and I'm working on doing T-bogs. He's... He's very hard on himself. Very hard on very himself. Very hard on himself. Like he gets frustrated if he doesn't do something yeah. fairly quickly. He's hard on himself and I think that's why he can excel and, and do certain things. This is my garage where I keep all my bikes. This one is a BMX bike. It's almost the same thing as this one, but this one doesn't have suspension. This one's my dirt jumper. I ride it on the half pipe outside, and this bike is my old downhill bike from last year. I ride it at Mountain Creek a lot. This is my trail bike that's for pedaling up and then going down the mountain. If I'm ever riding in the backyard, I would choose this bike because I hit all the bigger jumps at Mountain Creek on it, and it's good to get used to your tricks on a bike that you ride a lot. We do most of our biking on the weekends, but we ride the backyard during the weeks. We build a lot of ramps just to try to practice. This is the first year that he's really trying to do more tricks. So up to this point, it was just practicing the jumping and getting good at that. And now he's starting to want to do tricks. I see other people doing it and I want to do it. I just kind of fly them and keep practicing. Coming up next. Snowboard medals. This one is Hunter Mountain Royal Jam. We do a lot of snowboarding in the winter. It's a good fit because um, it's a separate activity. It's completely different than biking. And we typically don't really ride any bikes in the winter. We always say we're going to, and then we just get too involved in snowboarding. But it's a good thing to take a break and just kind of reset. I think he loves both, honestly. So during snowboard season, it's snowboard all the time. During bike season, it's the same way. So we try to maybe mix it and, and do both. I've never heard him say during bike season, I wish I was snowboarding. And I've never heard him in snowboard season say, I wish I was biking. Yeah. So I think when he's in the season, he's it's, it's all the way in it. Yeah and he doesn't really miss the other one. For snowboarding, there's more competition for the kids. On biking, there's a lot of good kid races around here. It's not as prevalent right now. He's more into learning to do tricks and jumps and things, seeing where that. He's is. never been concerned with being the fastest. the fastest. He wants to do the coolest stuff. He pushes himself to learn harder and harder things, right. but races, he's like, oh. Okay. Everything in life, not just biking, but everything. He doesn't do it until he's ready. Yep. And he will say, I'm not ready to do that. I'm not ready, I'm not ready. He'll wake up, I'm ready. And he does it flawlessly. This week, in fact, he was working on something and he was starting to get frustrated. And he says, I'm just gonna take a break and uh, work on it later. So. Which is new, he wouldn't have done that last year. Right. We used to live about 
five minutes from here and we had a pump track that my husband built. We find we're quickly outgrowing everything. So we'll build a ramp that takes a few months to build and then very quickly it's too small. So we're kind of up against that right now. I think Luke really looks up to him. I keep trying to tell him that, you know, work together and you guys will be able to, you know, go out and do anything together, you know. When we started it, it was just for fun. Sometimes it gets more serious than that and I'm always there to try to help him. Dude, that was so sick! It's nice that it's kind of the two of you are all working together and he's yep. not really trying to impress anyone but himself. He right. just wants to do Works better for, for himself. himself. Just one day down for these future stars. Tomorrow they'll be back at it again, working and training. Because when you want to be the best, there are no days off.